Good morning. So continuing on our theme of easiest, in my opinion, uh, tropical fruit trees to grow in the Central Valley. A mango. So I wanted to talk about the ease of which it, it, it takes to grow a, a mango here in the Central Valley. Um, just not any mango though. A admittedly, most mangoes from experience has no problem with our climate. Our winter's not an issue. Uh, loves our summer. The biggest issue that you're probably gonna run into with, with majority of the varieties of mangoes is gonna be the pH and the soil environment that we have. I mean, we, we've got clay soil, which is not a big, which is not, a, it, which is not very favorable to, uh, to mango trees. However, there is one particular mango variety that doesn't care about our clay soil. It, it, in fact, it actually thrives in our clay soil. And it so happens to be that it is also the world's sweetest mango. So that's a win-win. So let me show you. So this is a, a Keith mango. I mean, it's doing great here, right? However, in the beginning though, I did amend the soil heavily in order for, to allow this guy to be established. But once it's mostly established, as you can see, it, it's growing nicely. Uh, new growth, no leaf damage at all, no, no leaf burns. Uh, so that, that tells me it has no difficulties uptaking the uh, nutrients and the uh, water from the soil now that it's somewhat established. So Keith mango. Also uh, another mango, Corriente mango. Again, <clears throat> new growth. Look at this. I mean, it, it is just wonderful looking. Brand new growth, still very pink. In the beginning, when planting this in the ground, I heavily amended the soil. Uh, what I mean by heavily amending the soil is incorporating a lot of sand for drainage, incorporating a good amount of elemental sulfur to lower the pH. Um, and over a period of time, uh, it, it eventually established and, and becomes acclimated to the nearby clay soil. But there is the Manila mango, which essentially is the base mango for the, 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 the if, if you go to the uh, grocery stores, you might see atelfu or, uh, or uh, honey mango. I've seen them advertised as being champagne mango. But basically that particular type of mango is it comes from the Manila mango. And this is what they look like. So we, we did have two Inga trees here. I, but we did, I ended up just taking out the one, Mane, uh, one Inga and just container growing it. Uh, so that way I kind of wanted to have more mangoes in the front. Um, so <laughs> Manila mango. That's phenomenal here in the Central Valley. I mean, as you can see, no microclimate, taking the sun without any difficulties. Uh, in fact, this guy was planted about three weeks ago. Uh, a bunch of new growth up here, as you can see. So this tells me it's, it's taking it. I, I see, I don't see any um, environmental stress with this particular mango. So this tells me that it's going to do awesome here. Another manila that was actually planted uh, last year. So this guy did go to um, our winter. I mean, it's loving the heat. The, the cool thing about Manila mangoes is they're a bit compact in, in that, uh, you know, you, you might get them to about be about maybe 15 feet or so um, in their native climate. Uh, but in, in, our, in our climate, um, I think you'd be lucky to get them maybe 12, 13 feet. Um, but yeah, so these are the slightly younger ones. Um, in fact, let me kind of give you an update on, on the Manila mango that I put in the ground um, November of last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I planted a, a mango in beginning of uh, winter. 
I need to prune this back, but as you can see, it, it obviously is taking it. So yeah, look at the new foliage. I mean, this is just wonderful looking. So the, the thing with the uh, Manila mangoes is the, the size of the mangoes or smaller than your typical Tommy Atkins, Kent mango that, that you normally find in your local grocery stores. You, you want the mangoes to be like super yellow. Uh, that's when you get them at the sweetest types, uh, sweetest uh, time. In my case, um, just because I do have a number of Manila mangoes in the ground, uh, my strategy really is to use them uh, as kind of a rootstock and, and uh, graft other varieties uh, onto it. Uh, that, that gives uh, the other varieties a, a slightly better chance uh, just because it, it, it now is attached to a, a mother tree that uh, is essentially plugged into the mycorrhizal network. And, um, and, and it's not struggling as much with uptaking the nutrients and water. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna chop off uh, one of these branches and, and graft something onto it, a, a, a different variety onto it. Um, so that, that's gonna be my strategy for, for the, the mangoes. Uh, I'm gonna take you to the back where I've, I've got a, a few more examples to show so you. Here's the back. So this is what I, <laughs> I like to refer to the section of the yard as being the, angle, uh, the mango alley. Um, so another benefit of the Manila mango is, as with most Asian variety mango species, they're actually somewhat immune to diseases that, that plague most mango trees. Uh, Anthracnose comes to mind. An example, this is a, uh, a, a Tommy Atkin. was well, going great, but then of course I had to chop it off because I discovered symptoms of anthracnose. And uh, yeah, it, it basically causes limb dieback. So I'm going to have to uh, chop it off even more and, and seal it up. But uh, I, I, I think I might have saved this tree just because I'm, I'm seeing a, a number of new growth on, on the lateral branches. So you're not going to have that issue with the Manila mangoes. So just because they do so well here, I, 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 I bought a bunch more. Uh, Manila here, Manila here, and more Manila. Yep. So also a, a benefit of uh, the Manila mango is I actually got this from my local big box store. On occasions, if you are lucky, your local homes, uh, Home Depot uh, and, and Lowe's and, and other big box stores carry them. In, in fact, I've got this one from Lowe's, um, as with these two actually. So yeah, so that, that's, a, that's an added benefit is, I, I'm guessing the, the Wholesale nurseries know that these do so well here. That's probably why they offer them uh, to your local uh, big box stores. So uh, they are, they, they can be readily easy to obtain. So here are the two Manila mangoes that I, I have in the ground that I kind of wanted to uh, talk to you about. So this particular Manila I want to say was planted in the ground, oh, I, uh, I think maybe two years ago, but it's doing awesome. As you can see, a bunch of new growth. And this is actually the more mature uh, Manila that I, I have that's in the ground. It is presently reaching about 10 feet tall. The, the thing with the Manila mangoes is they, they are somewhat of a, a late bloomer uh, in the sense that, as you can see, I mean, right now the, the flowers haven't even developed yet. So at, at the time of this recording, the 
mango is still focusing mostly on, on their growth. Um, however, right around June or so, that's when both of these mangoes will start to produce flowers. Uh, and then usually in July to August, that, that's when the, the fruit ripens. Um, and again, uh, with, with, with the Melilla variety mangoes, uh, as with most of the mangoes too, you, you want it to be at its full ripeness. Uh, that, that's how you get, uh, that's how you get the, the sweetest of all the fruits. So yeah, Manila mango. Uh, if you go up and down the Central Valley, I mean, I, I actually have seen a couple of houses where they do have Manila style mangoes. Um, and just because they do so well here, I mean, again, it, it takes our winter without any issues. Uh, same with summer, I mean, mo most mangoes in, in, in general, and this isn't just what Manila, but the summers, uh, they, they, there's actually a lot of benefits to growing mango in the Central Valley, unlike other uh, regions such as Florida. Um, so anthrax knows and, and other pest issues that attack mango trees, mo uh, such as um, powdery mildew is another example. Those two issues are, are caused by mostly high humidity. And in the Central Valley, <laughs> we have no humidity. So, which means, I mean, the dry heat, the mangoes love. I mean, the, the, the drier it is, uh, granted, you've got to keep the roots nice and hydrated. But above that, the drier it is, the mangoes don't care. The, the less the issues, pest issues, these mangoes have to uh, combat. So, I, I guess that's one thing that we've got going for us is our dry heat. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, I mean, w with most mangoes, um, actually, let me, let me show you, this is a good example. Um, in the beginning, uh, this is an Afonso. With most mangoes, I, I do paint the, the trunk of the mango tree to <laughs> basically prevent them from uh, burning up. Uh, let me see if I can find another one. Oh yeah, right here. Uh, so, Kyo Savoy mango. The trunk, paint it uh, using a, a solution from I, IV Organic. Um, so this essentially cools down the trunk, essentially prevents the, the or summer from burning up the trunk. However, if you notice the Manila, I mean, this guy doesn't care. I don't want to paint it. I mean, this, this is just natural browning. Um, so we got one there. A few more. <laughs> Another one here. So this one is mostly in the shade. Uh, the, the thing too with the Manila variety is the fact that they really do quite well even in the shade. And lastly, another one here. Let me look at that. Yeah, if you've noticed, both of these mangoes, due to the position, virtually has no microclimate. Uh, and yet, they're doing great. I mean, this is the uh, tomato that, that's fighting with it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's doing awesome. So, yeah, Manila mangoes. If you want a mango in the Central Valley, start off with a Manila. These are practically bulletproof. Um, the, the thing too with Manila that I've noticed um, when, when purchasing them is all of them appear to be grown from seed. I do not spot any graft joints, un, any union joints. So that takes me to the belief that they're all likely grown from seed. So speaking of seed, this is uh, how easy they are to... Uh, to propagate my seedling station back here. Let me see if I can find one. I think there's one back here. Yeah. Grab a uh, manila mango fruit, 
took out the seed, plugged it in. That's how easy it is to grow. And these, generally within three to four years, will start producing fruits for you. So yeah, they're, they're quite easy to propagate from seeds as well. Uh, I mean, if you're short on time, just stop by your big box store and see if they carry manila mangoes. But um, yeah, just uh, it's just an awesome tree to have. Uh, just it, very useful in, in the sense that you know, if you choose to, just use it use it for a uh, as a, a rootstock. So anyhow, yeah, that's uh, that's manila mango for you. Just uh, it is. There's just. It is virtually bulletproof, in my opinion. Just stick it in the ground, and, and it, it really, in most cases, will grow. All right, have a good afternoon.